Alright guys, so before we go any further, we need to figure out how to handle input from the user, how to respond to touch events, stuff like that. It's going to be awesome. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to implement the interface input processor. So implement input processor. Now since we implemented it, what I'm going to do is right after render, give yourself a couple lines and if you hold down control and I, it's going to give you all the methods that you need to implement. It's just going to write them in there for you. So all of these methods get called automatically whenever the user does something. Now a lot of these like key down, key up, key typed, these are just specific to desktop and like um, web development. What we are worried about is this. And this is another one, mouse moved. Of course you don't have a mouse on an Android touchscreen device. So I'm going to go ahead and copy these ones. These are all your touch events and just cut those and I just want to move them to the top real quick. And that way we have all the methods that we're actually going to use clumped together in all these ones scrolled mouse moved again like you guys already know libgdx can be used for cross platform game development but we are only focused on um, Android not like desktop or anything so let's figure out what methods we're using this one touchdown you guys can probably already guess but touchdown is when the user taps their finger or touches the screen touch up gets called anytime the user releases the finger or lifts it up off the screen and touch drag as the user as dr is dragging their finger across the screen this is going to be called repeatedly so every single pixel that it moves for example if you just moved it an inch it's gonna call this method like a hundred times so that's what those do and another thing I don't even know if I told you guys this but I already imported all of the stuff we're gonna use for this step this demo this demo we're just gonna have some text in the middle of the screen and whenever they tap down um, it's just gonna display the coordinates I don't know if I told you guys that already if I did well now you know it again so under sprite batch we need to declare a couple things um, do I want to comment this? Nah. I'll just leave it as B. So, bitmap font, we'll just call that the font. That's the text that's going to display in the middle of the screen. Now, another thing that I want to show you guys how to do is this. I'm going to make two variables for screen width and screen height. And what I want to do is I want to center this text right in the middle of the screen. So in order to calculate exactly where we need to position it, we're first going to get the screen width and screen height. And you can actually put the text anywhere for this demo. But um, I figure I might as well show you guys now since it's a technique that you're going to use a lot. And the last thing is just private string the message itself and what do we want to appear by default when the user first opens the app it will just say like touch me and of course after they touch down somewhere on the screen it's going to display the coordinates but the very first thing they'll see is touch me good enough alright so might as well go ahead and handle these screen widths and height right now so for the screen width is actually really easy if you just call GDX graphics dot get width it's going to return the width in pixels of whatever device this app is running on so we need to do the same thing for height graphics and get height awesome alright so the next thing I want to do is just set up the font and remember the font is pretty much just styling do you what color do you want it um what size all that good stuff and by the way Whenever I'm uh, just showing you guys this example, the font's going to look really choppy. And that's because I'm just going to show you guys a real quick way to scale it up. It's the same one we used in the last tutorial. However, whenever you're making games, there's a better way to make font. This is just kind of the quick and dirty way that we can use for, I don't know, just quick demos. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to like have custom fonts and all the different properties. But for right now, we can just use bitmap font and after that I want to call a method to set its color 
And let me set it to like green. I don't think we used that one before. Clear? Hmm, that would show up well. <laughs> Alright. Font color green and to grow it I'm just gonna scale it by five times. Now again what this does if you have 12 pixel font it doesn't turn it into 60 pixel font it just takes 5 pixel or excuse me 12 pixel font and stretches it so it's gonna look all pixelated but whatever we don't care we're just worried about um, handling touch events in this tutorial now the last thing I want to do is this actually let me delete this because I kinda need to explain it now whenever you handle touch events what you can do is you can handle it in this class stick all your methods here you can make an entirely different class specific and made just for handling touch events in other words you can handle it in a bunch of different locations in a bunch of different ways what our program needs to know is okay whenever I'm handling text or excuse me handling user input where are those methods that you want me to look for and we just stuck those in this class the same exact class so we just need to tell it that so input set input processor this and again this is essentially saying that whenever you are looking to handle user input taps touches drags look in this class for the methods and there they are right there now one other thing that I want to do is this I want to actually dispose of the font because that's a resource that we need to free up and if you guys are like alright how do I know what objects I'm supposed to free up and what I can just leave and not worry about if you go in the lib GDX documentation they have a class I believe it's called disposable Let me... and yep right here disposable and if you click this it's gonna give you all the objects that you need to free up so again any method that you, or excuse me any object that you can actually call dispose on you probably should dispose so that's just gonna save yourself from memory leaks now the next thing I want to do in render is this now remember what we want to do is we want to put the message or that text right in the middle of the screen so you guys are like alright we'll just get the width in the height we already got those we'll just divide them by two to get the center point of the screen and we'll just plop our message right there well that is going to give you the exact center of the screen however whenever you place your message there remember the messages origin is in the bottom left corner so it's not going to place the center of the message on the center point of the screen it's going to place the bottom left of the message on that middle so it's going to look something like this so if this blue area was the message in the middle was the middle of the screen then it's gonna place it somewhere right there so essentially what we need to do is we need to account for the message size so if we go to bitmap font and we call text bounds and we can actually just name this variable like text size or something like that then what we can do is we can just use the font to get bounds. Now of course we need to pass in what one we're using and it's just going to be that message and again this is just equal to the string touch me right now but this is going to change but what it's going to do is it's going to look at this object and pretty much get the size of it so then we can use that to pretty much account for that and position it correctly you guys are going to see in like half a second so I'll just store it in the X and Y so the first thing we need to do is we need to get the width of the screen over 2 and again that's going to give you the center of the screen but then we need to subtract the text size width over 2 and we do the same thing for the y position so so or what did I say so what the heck does that mean alright so the height over 2 and we actually want to add because remember um, the coordinate system is a little bit um, flipped whenever you're working with just libgdx check size height over 2 looking good so now all we have to do is actually draw this on the screen so I can clean this up a little bit alright now remember anytime we want to draw we can just use font draw pass in our batch so it speeds it up what do you want to draw how about that message 
Where do you want to draw it? How about the X and Y coordinates, which will place it right in the center of the screen. Now if you run this program right now, it's just going to display touch me and that's it. You can tap down and nothing's going to happen. It's going to keep that static text. Now of course the point of this tutorial is to handle these touch events. So the first thing we want to do is we want to return these three to true. We say return them to true, change them to true. And that means, hey, these events were handled. So let's go ahead and just use this first one first, touch them. Now all I'm going to do is I want to change the message or the text on the screen and it'll just put it in the little indicator of where they or where that event occurred. So touched or I'll say now nah, touchdown at screen X. Make sure I got my commas in the right place. Screen Y. So it's pretty much just going to display the coordinates easy enough. And actually what I can do is just copy these because they're going to be pretty similar. All right, so this is for the touch up. And this is for, actually, let me go ahead and show you guys something. All right, now the reason that I don't want to call this touch drag method is this. Whenever you touch down for the very first time, you don't just hold your finger finger on the exact same pixel. And no matter how hard you try, your finger is going to move at least a little bit. So in order for us to clearly see this touchdown being called before touch drag gets called, I'm just going to run this little demo right here. And let me actually set up my for some reason I need to be holding my phone in a specific kind of way or else the screen recorder kind of messes up. Alright so there we have it, it says touch me and I'm just gonna tap in the top right corner touch down and now I am releasing my finger touch up. Now let me do it like in the bottom left touch down and you can actually drag it and then release it and boom look at that. Now let me go ahead and stop my recording so now let me show you guys why I didn't want to run this touch drag method and let's say dragging at that that alright so now we have some functionality in touch drag now let me go ahead and run this as well alright now check this out I'm just gonna tap down and I'm not moving my finger at all or at least it seems to me that I'm not moving it at all and I released it so pretty much as soon as you tap down even if you try to hold it still your finger is going to be moving a little bit and it's going to kick off that touch drag method alright so as I was saying that's why I just didn't want to call all of these at once and that's another thing that you have to be careful for if you know you don't really want to call the touch drag method or if it's not being called when you expect it to so yeah thank you guys for watching again all of this code is going to be on my forum and uh, well I'll see you later